there is a discussion on Plasma Spider about how to cut holes along the flanges of a beam of an extended length. Um, here's, a, here's a person who built a, took a go torch and connected several go torch rails together or, or maybe they were DHC2, you know, rails or whatever, but he connected them together. And these rails are currently 289 inches long, and he's going to extend them another four feet to 337 inches, I think it is. And the situation is when you lay a beam on a conveyor belt here, the go torch gantry is supposed to go along and cut four holes and move to the next point on the beam and cut four holes and move to the next point etc and cut four holes the problem that he is running into is that the beams are not straight and they're not all the same some beams are bowed one direction some beams are bowed the other some beams are bowed in an s shape uh, you know, these beams are, are very, very long, and uh, the steel bends and moves. You would think it was a straight, hard steel beam, but over that long of a length, under its own weight, and with shipping and not being tied down properly or whatever, the beam will bow. Well, then you run into the problem of the go torch wanting to run along a straight set of rails and cut the holes in sets of four, you know, as, as you would lay it out in Design Edge. But the problem is when the go torch follows the straight rails and you lay down the array of holes and the beam is bent, this is what happens. The holes get cut in the wrong place as you move along the beam and you don't get that even spacing. Now the beam can be straightened out during construction. They can pull it this way or that way. The welders can make the beam straight but the desired solution, of course, is to have these holes equally spaced from the sides of the beam, regardless of where those holes are cut. This beam is bowed upward, and the holes are evenly spaced. But you can't lay that pattern out in Design Edge because there's no way to, to, to measure the beam accurately and get the curves correct and everything. It would drive you crazy. So what you want to do is you want to lay down a straight pattern like this and you want to have some way to have the machine follow the curve of the beam to place those holes exactly here and here or exactly here and here regardless of where that beam falls at that point on the travel along the conveyor belt. So as the discussion progressed on Plasma Spider, uh, I suggested a floating gantry. This would be your solid gantry on top of your, uh, you know, attached to your rails and whatnot. And um, when it moved, of course, it would move in this fashion along the rails and it would cut those holes and those holes, etc., etc., as it ran along the beam. And I suggested that um, a floating gantry be put on top of this. If you were to take this and copy it, and I'll just copy it over, over to here. Now we would assume this gantry is on top of this gantry and, and instead of on the side, but for the purpose of this demonstration, I'll show it here. So with this kind of a setup, This is, the, this is the desired result here of what you want, is you want the um, gantry, I'll just copy it down to here, okay, and as the gantry and carriage move from location to location along the solid rail, the floating gantry would shift Oops. The floating gantry would shift so that the holes follow the curve of the beam. And each time you moved it 
on the straight rails of the uh, go torch machine the floating gantry would adjust so that the holes always fell in the same place along the beam well this floating gantry I thought it might be the solution but it's actually not because what happens is when you're doing this type of a setup I'll take this and copy it down here when you're doing this type of a setup and this go torch begins here you may have the gantry be able to start there and cut these four holes but these four holes are not parallel with the rail they are not turned they, they are turned on an angle because ideally you want the holes on the beam to be the same distance this hole to the end and this hole to the end and this hole to the end and this hole to the end you want them all to be the same so this type of a setup is not ideal because even though this gantry may be able to float up and down as it moves across you know it may be able to to um, move down to compensate for the for the bow of the beam but it does not change the angle of the holes and what you end up with is you end up with this kind of a situation where at the end you can see it's obvious the holes are not straight with the end of the beam because the holes are straight per, are perpendicular to the rail but the beam at any given point except for maybe the center is not perpendicular to the rail it's on an angle you see so this is the ideal situation you want here but you can't do it with um, with a gantry that that is solid like so what actually has to happen is this gantry needs to be able to change its orientation so that it follows the beam it can maintain that 90 degree um, uh, corner with the beam regardless of which holes it is cutting okay and unfortunately this gantry is moving on straight rails so what it's what it's actually asking the gantry to do is to rotate like this as it goes to one end and then it comes to the center here and then it comes to this end like this over here at the other end and the gantry cannot rotate like that but that is ideally the way to get these holes laid out the way you want them which is equally spaced from the edge from the one end of the beam to the other and it doesn't matter what the shape of that beam is if that beam is s shaped then this gantry needs to follow this path on the uh, uh, curve down so that the holes remain perpendicular you see these holes are not lined up correctly right but here the holes are always perpendicular to the edge of the beam because the gantry rotates with the shape of the beam and that's the best way to get those holes correct and then of course going in the other direction it would rotate in the other direction like so and you would always be perpendicular with all of those holes regardless of where the gantry was on the beam well that que that raises the question of whether rails should be used at all with the go torch I'm thinking that these this this gantry should be placed on some kind of a cart like this on the beam 
Uh, let me draw it here. We'll get a little closer so you can see it. Okay. And we'll take this gantry and we'll move it down to center here just for the heck of it. Okay. And we'll put four little wheels right here. And I'm not drawing this accurately because I'm just doing a video at the moment. But if this cart here held the gantry tube, and then as the two of them were moving along the beam, the cart would rotate with the beam, keeping the gantry parallel to the beam at all times. You see that? And when it got to the other side over here, it would maintain a parallel orientation with any sec section or segment of the beam, even though the beam bends left or right over its length, the gantry would always be 90 degrees or very close to 90 degrees to the edge of the beam because it would follow that profile. So I'm not sure that, that there's an easy way to solve this issue of, you know, drilling holes correctly like this in a curved beam. Because a gantry that runs straight along rails is going to give you this beam here. And as you can see, the holes remain perpendicular to the rails regardless of where they're placed on the X and Y. Uh, you know, uh, if these holes are moved up a little bit or down a little bit to, to meet the beam, they're still not rotated. And therefore, they come out wrong. You can see that here. The distance from this hole to the edge of the beam is quite a bit different than this hole to the edge of the beam. So just simply moving the gantry or even sliding the gantry from left to right does not solve the problem because the holes need to follow the profile of the beam in order for it to come out like this correctly so that no matter what angle that beam is being cut at, the holes are going to be perpendicular to the sides and this distance here is always going to remain the same so in conclusion I'm thinking that this is the best setup of all these are reference holes I was going to use but I'm not using them so I'll just delete them um, the original poster was asking about changing the zero zero uh, or just one zero on the machine and his idea was to have the carriage uh, come back to the limit switch without the gantry moving back to the home position and then moving over to the next holes and moving out and cutting these holes and then coming back to the limit switch and cutting these holes and the problem again is the distance here changes as the beam is curved or if the beam is s-shaped the distance changes so one way around that um, if you're not too concerned about the holes being <laughs> par uh, parallel with the with the beam which would would bug the heck out of me uh, with OCD that would just bug the heck out of me but um, one way to do that would be instead of trying to move the zero of the machine what you would do is you would take the machine in Design Edge, you would simply move the machine to the place where you want your first hole, wherever that would be, on the beam. Okay. You would move it, you would move it on the beam, and then you would take your pattern.
and you would move it from perhaps the center of this hole to R, the torch point, and you would drop it, you know, right there. Okay. And then what would happen is you're cutting your four holes where you've placed the torch and you move the pattern to the torch location rather than trying to move the um, the zero zero in correspondence with the bending of the beam. So this is an interesting challenge and I do believe that this is the best solution. Let me get rid of these lines because I don't need them. Okay. <clears throat> when your rails are straight and the beam is straight, the carriage can obviously move along like this and just cut this hole and this hole and whatnot straight along the beam, and that's not a problem. But when the beam is curved, I really think that, that fabricating some kind of a cart or a trolley or something that would roll along the top flange of the beam. So that as you started at one end, you would put the cart on here. And I guess, I, well, I don't know how you would start it out here because you'd have the torch off to one side. You might have to, you might have to cut half this way and then flip the thing around. Uh, let's say the torch, just for the heck of it, was out here somewhere. off of the gantry okay and the torch is the torch is moving back and forth like this cutting these holes as it goes through okay if that's the case you would have to take this and um, you could you could cut these holes and these holes and these all the way along to here and then what you would do is you would flip around. You'd take the cart off of the beam and flip it around the other way. And then you would come back and you would cut those last four holes like so. I really think that's the best solution. I know you have the rails and you built this rack and the rails and you have a conveyor belt that you lay the beam on and the torch goes along and cuts the holes. And I really don't know how much of a bend these beams are. If you have, if these things are, um, let's see, you made the thing 200 and, 289 inches long. So that's 24 feet. Uh, and if you're going, if you're going another four feet, let's, let's just say you're going to, you're going to, you're dealing with 24 foot beams. Well, how much variance over 24 feet does the beam move from side to side? Are we talking a half an inch or four inches? You know, either way, <laughs> it makes a big difference on, on how much this type of an error here is going to show up. When the go torch uh, gantry is straight, but it's moving over here to cut these holes. You see, the holes are cut straight with the gantry, but the holes are not straight. Line center here to perpendicular here. The holes are not straight with the beam. I really think this is the way to go on this. Uh, I'm going to have to build one of these. I've got go torches laying around here and parts and things. I might have to build one of these just for proof of concept and cut holes in a bent I-beam just to prove the concept. But I really think this would work. Because this car 
would stay perpendicular to the end of the beam regardless of which way the beam bent and wherever the gantry cut the holes the holes would be perpendicular see that I do free online training on through Zoom and other online conferencing. Uh, you'd send me your name, address, and in, phone number, information about your computer, your software, your table, etc., and what it is you would like to learn. And uh, we will link our computers together over the internet free, and I will help you either learn how to use the software or how to work out a problem that you're having that you can't figure out on your own. Um, I just do this for fun. I don't charge for that unless I have to come up to your location. Then I do charge a daily fee because there's obviously, you know, gasoline and hotel and food and a lot of other expenses involved in traveling. But doing it from my home computer here, I don't charge anything. I do it for free and for fun. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you and I hope you have enjoyed this video.